Another viewer build. Thank you very much for taking the, yeah. the time to come up. What is it? It's a 72 high boy. I love it. I know you guys love it too. And it's what's under the hood as well. Here we go. Alright, so, so what's the story on the truck? I bought this truck in Saskatchewan. It's a 72 high boy and I had bought a diesel engine, 7.3 diesel engine, and a five-speed transmission for it. Before or after you bought the truck? Before. Yeah. So, <laughs> I got an engine, now I need something to put yeah. it in. Yeah. <laughs> I got a 93 dump truck that has that motor in it. So I bought it kind of spare parts, whatever. And okay. I was like, I could probably drive this thing. So I bought this truck. And I drove it home and had a 360 in it. And it was uh, an eventful trip home. <laughs> we'll see. So, how, how long of the trip? 3,300 kilometers. Nice. So yeah, I drove her home and realized that 360 is not. Yeah, the mileage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you found it on Marketplace or something? Yeah, Kijiji. And then, yeah. Um, and I was looking like out there. Well, a, it's a like bit of a holiday. Yeah. And at the same time, they don't have the same climate there as yeah. we do yeah. here. Yeah. Less rust, whatever. So I brought the dog. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> nah, she was the only one that wanted to come. <laughs> <laughs> when I bought it, there was no muffler on it, and I drove it. Halfway across the country, no muffler, no license plates. I had my AV permit in the back window. Never got stopped once. <laughs> I drive like this, I cover the dog's ears, just <laughs> bro. Two, two of you with headsets on, like oh, that's wild stuff. <laughs> yeah, awesome, but I'm not the actual owner on this one anymore. Which is even cooler because, yeah, you sold it to a guy down the road from me, a really cool guy. He loves it, he thinks it's really cool. I bought a 77 Super Cat because my family's growing. Oh, nice, and congratulations. With, yeah, yeah. With Supercab, I can do everything right that I did wrong on this one. Yeah, because this is IDI? Yeah, yeah. IDI, yeah. original high boy frame, okay. five speeds at a five. Nice. So, nice. Which, like, transmission's good, but yeah, the IDI is kind of gutless. Okay. I had a gooseneck in it. You know the new owner's gonna watch this, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> there was about 14 guys who wanted it right then. Yeah. The first guy that came was Mark, and he's like, well, like, I don't know, it's pretty nice. I don't know what my wife will think. Like, uh, can I come back tomorrow? I'm like, dude, if you leave, like, this truck's gone. <laughs> like, if you want it, you better leave in it. So, is, did you clear coat it at all? Or no, is it just no, it's this is, yeah, yeah it's, okay. it got rain done. Yeah, but, <laughs> it's right yeah, it uh, comes with the uh, weight savings, yeah, and all yeah. that stuff. It's a fairly straight truck, a couple dents in yeah. the box, so actually, but not Funny story, when I bought this truck, sight unseen, pictures only, this box wasn't on it. This oh. truck had another box on it, clearly the same color. I met a guy in Manitoba. I got gas and you have to go in to pay there. And I come back out and he's leaning on it like this. I'm like, can I help you? It's like, is this your truck? I'm like, yeah, I just bought it like two days ago. It's like, sweet, I got a 72 at home, just the same. I'm like, you're kidding me. It's like, come to my house, I'll show you. And that box, like the guy had stacks in it and he had to cut a hole in it and it was rusty. Yeah. And so I went to his house and we fixed up some stuff. He put me up for the night. I oh, slept, yeah, I slept in bed, I had a shower. Yeah, oh, yeah, it was great. Awesome. He's like, my wife's out of town. I got to have somebody to talk to. And he's like, if you want parts, like it's going in the scrap gear. Yeah. So we did a swapsies. This is his box, believe it or not. And like, it's got the same scratches. It's rusty. Like it's, like, it's I, perfect. I would never have known. <laughs> yeah. Like what are the odds? There's something about the car community. There's like yeah, oh, just yeah. because you have something similar, it's like yeah, sleep, yeah. sleep in my place. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. he's like here. Like if yours doesn't work right, take my truck to town. And get some parts. I'm like, yes, please. <laughs> what are the chances you're both serial killers? Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> This, I drove this truck to Thunder Bay after it got swapped to a diesel. Okay. Thunder Bay is like 18 hours and there was a rebuilt 7.3 turbo IDI out there. I was having head gasket issues. I wasn't sure it was making noises and I wasn't sure if it was a head gasket. So I brought an engine hoist just in case because <laughs> I was going to buy a new motor. <laughs> Save a lot of weight if yeah. you install the crappy one there, right? I made it six hours into that trip and the head gasket blew. It went straight out through a water jacket, so I was losing coolant everywhere. Yeah. And then it went out to air. So I was blasting coolant all over the place. It's running like a dog. I'm like, ah, I'm like almost halfway. Do I turn around? Do I keep going? I phone the guy out there in Thunder Bay and he's like, you could probably make it. Pull the rad cap off, put water in it. So I was like, sure, I got an engine voice, why not? Awesome. Truck on out there, we pulled the motor out of his truck and put it in the back. 
And I made it home. I just kept adding water. Like oh, really? Oh, you oh, didn't yeah. swap it at his place? No, I wanted oh. to. But like the turbo. <laughs> Get out of here. I yeah. got your money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the turbo, I didn't have all the downpipe and stuff. So like, oh, okay. Fine. Yeah, if yeah, it's yeah. a real situation, I can do it. But we got it home, and this is the new motor in it now. Okay. Um, and the turbo is, it's still kind of gutless. Yeah. So originally it was IDI uh, NA? Yeah. Yeah. And then you went for the turbo yeah. and all these high hopes that your first yeah. test drive, you're like, well, it's a little better. I put I put this motor in it and I also swapped axles. It used to have four tens. These axles have 355. Okay. So okay. I turbocharged it and then put a higher gear ratio in it. So it's like as bad as it ever was. Maybe yeah. even worse, to be honest. <laughs> like, but a little, so what, what kind of mileage do you get out of it now? So 14-ish liters per hundred kilometers. That's not bad. Yeah, whatever that is. It's yeah, so that's uh, 18, 17, 18, some, somewhere between 16 and 18 miles to the gallon. Yeah. So that's, Sounds that's bad. pretty, yeah. It's not <laughs> terrible, really. It's, like, honestly, for a 45-year-old vehicle, I thought it was pretty good. Right, so that's regular cab long box. That's yeah. crew cab long box. And with the 460, that was getting exactly nine miles to the gallon. Yeah. So you're almost double. Yeah, that's yeah. bad. Yeah. So, but it had probably more power. <laughs> right on. Key's got to be on one click to yeah. run the glow plugs. No, so just, so just, yeah, 10 seconds, 15 yeah. seconds. No one ran for two minutes. <laughs> I know. You know, Cosby sauce. Where's Peg? <laughs> I've, I've tried that. Um, what the heck was it? The dump truck. The glow plug relay wasn't working. Oh, so yeah, I yeah. spurred a little bit. Yeah. They don't like it one bit. <laughs> Damn near snuffs them out. Like. That, that, so it's funny because. I hated these IDIs just because they they just don't start. Yeah. Even in the dead of summer, like yeah. 30 degrees Celsius, it's, and it's hard like, to get up the Yeah, and, and they still need the glow plug. I'm like, yeah. what, a, what a crappy engine. That, it's been like that since day one. Like, it sat, I bought the motor and transmission together. This is still the same transmission. And it yeah. sat under a bench for like 12 years or something, the guy told me. So the motor, when it blew the head gas, I pulled it apart and I was going to put a head gas in it. Yeah. Keep it for parts. And yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Um, so, pulled the heads off it and the cylinders were pitted so badly. Just from sitting, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Eh? And, yeah. And this transmission also sat with it. So, I don't know. So, I hated working on the, on the stupid Fords because it's always glow plugs and glow plug controllers and blah, blah. Go to... I do some work in Africa, and the guy that who started the school there, he taught a construction school in Canada, and they, they built them an um, 80s F-350, yeah. and shipped it over to Africa, and they're like, oh, I want to go work on some nice Toyota Helixes and stuff, and they're like, oh, <laughs> the guy's truck won't start, and I'm like, it's in Africa, why do I want to start glow plugs? <laughs> so, you guys have the return lines on the, on the, on the injectors, those stupid plastic rings, yeah. I'm like, oh. I go all across the world, and I'm still stuck working on stupid Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the first, so the first IDI I had was in my dump truck. It's a 93 F Super, and it's got 73 IDI. I went to buy it, um, and one of those um, injector caps was leaking. Right? Yeah. And I was like, oh, freak. It wasn't like we were three hours from home. So I made the mistake, never, never seen an IDI before. I went and I wiggled it. I'm like, huh. Oh well, and I wiggled all of the rest of them. I made a five minutes down the road. It smells like diesel. The smoke pouring out from under the hood. What in the world? Off the hood. It's just fuel everywhere. Like, now I know. Do not touch them. Yeah, those stupid little plastic bags. Oh yeah. Why would you do that? At miles? Yeah. No, it just it just feels really fast. <laughs> it's so fast. <laughs> Canvas and started it, switched to the metric system in 73. Okay, this is 72. Oh, nice. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, it's pretty good. Like, I, I, this is my daily drive. I was like, I could either go with the 73 or a 67, and no way do I want to A, deal with the electronics in a 67, yeah. and B, can I afford to buy a 67? Yeah, but you can. Yeah. Two, so so another five years, we'll be riding there. Yeah. So this motor, I haven't been into it. Um, I picked it up from the guy out in Thunder Bay, um, put it on a pallet and painted it blue. <laughs> put it in here. <laughs> Cheap rebuild. <laughs> I do have all the paperwork that says it was rebuilt, but it was about like 10 years before. Oh, um, doesn't look like there's any fluids other than water on the ground. 
It, it, doesn't, doesn't, it hasn't been running very long. Okay. <laughs> well, even still. Well, no, like, it, yeah. it wasn't leaking for me. The old motor okay. used to leak like crazy. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, this one doesn't mark its territory as bad. Nice. So what'd you have to do to make it fit? So really, it fit pretty good. I had to do a little bit of notching on the frame rail in the bottom corner there for the starter. Um, it's boxed at the front and then it turns into a seat at the back. Yeah. And where it, the box ends, it has this cut out like this and it wasn't quite enough. So I'd cut it back oh, a little okay. further. Oh, so you can't even tell. No, really, really you can't tell. Um, what you can tell, which I maybe shouldn't have done, but it's been working fine. This rad is almost the same width as the frame rails. Okay. So I cut out the top section of the C channel there. Yep. And welded a brace on the outside instead. So it goes from like C section to Z section and then back to C section. Okay. But the only thing that mounts up there is the front leaf spring purchase. Um, right. And they're not important. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, what, what's the rat out of? This is not meant for, there's a bracket supposed to be here. I'm not sure what that's for. I have a 93 F450 and it needs a new rat. And I bought one and the shipping was almost as much as the rat. And I was like, well, I have this other motor. I'll build another truck. I'll buy two while I'm at it. So uh, I bought two rads. So this is out of a 93 F Super Duty. It's like aluminum rad. Yeah. Can't yeah. really go wrong. Yeah, that's right. But the IDIs don't run hot anyway. Right? No. No, I've yeah. never had temperature issues. If anything, the issue is not getting up the temperature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I almost took the fan off and just put electrics on. Yeah. And they only come, like, same with the Cummins, they only come on when you're stuck in traffic for longer than, like, 30 minutes. I think I did power tour towing the GTO without fans on the Cummins and only got hot, like, the one time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so vacuum pump still, that's stock on yeah. the IDI for normal boot brakes. Yeah, yeah, so I kept the brake booster. It worked okay. Um, I haven't had any issues out of it. So vacuum pump, brake booster. This is a bracket for an air compressor, like a York 110. It, yeah. I gave it to the guy. I never got it set up. Like, it's all run for onboard air. It needs the filter and the water separator and stuff. Yep. There's a tank underneath. There's airbags. Oh, in. nice. Yeah, but I never put the compressor in it. So what I do... I have a, like a double-ended chuck, and I just blow up my air tank, and it lasts for as long as whatever. Blows the air horn just okay. under this fender. Okay. <laughs> so that compressor's meant more like like a, a V to like a V. It's, it's an old AC compressor. Oh, okay, um, okay. So it's the one that has oil in the bottom of it. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So all the off-road guys. Okay. I'm thinking of the monster one, the V twin, but that's meant for just idle for like yeah. tire service and stuff. Right? Yeah, no, nothing crazy like okay, that. Okay. This truck hasn't got enough power to run something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then everything else, like the battery cables and stuff, they're all stock 7.3 stuff. Um, I built it on a real tight budget and hey, it worked okay. The yeah. only thing I really had to get crazy with was the motor mounts. And like, once you get it set in there, you just kind of build them where it sits and yeah. that's it. Yeah. I've done yeah. it twice actually, because when I set this motor in, I set it crank centered on the frame rails. Yeah. Set it in there and ran my drive shaft stuff. That doesn't look straight. I like measured, yeah. measured again. Like they offset the crank. So, so I had the steering. Yeah, yeah. yeah. New motor mounts and whatever. But it actually worked out good because the steering now clears the manifold yeah. easier. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. So what would you do different? Don't put an IDI in it. It's just it's kind of gutless. Sorry, there, Peg. <laughs> <laughs> it might last forever. Yeah, sure. <laughs> kind of gutless. Um, they don't start great in the cold, and like they're just—it's old technology. Yeah. yeah. Power Stroke, um, seven three Power Stroke. They're awesome motors. And don't use your original frame and axles and all that stuff. It's good stuff for the seventies. Um, they're not meant to drive that quick, so the brakes are no good. New frame transmission everything underneath and just keep the old cool iron on top okay that's, so take the cab and the, yeah. the box throw it on okay all right that's what i do but as as for like the way you built the truck you're happy with it yeah this it doesn't truck, overheat it nope. doesn't rattle it doesn't shake it doesn't like it's 45 years old it rattles so, sorry shit. like no and, and the way that like you're, you're yeah no you're, you're not like, scared on the road it okay. drives pretty good it actually it drove better um with the original axles these ones i didn't get the steering gel for quite right um so it stops better now okay um but the steering is a little like a scuff so what are these better. axles out of then? these are out of a 1990 f350 okay so it's a dana 60 front yeah uh, kingpin and a 10 and a quarter sterling in the back okay i rushed when I put them in and it shows. That's the bad, you should have watched the Bronco video. <laughs> wait until that. <laughs> yeah, just wait four years. <laughs> yeah. This truck had this goofy, like just chrome bumper and it was straight. 
Yeah. And this winch was just bolted to the back of it. And it stuck out like this far. <laughs> and had an antenna on each corner so you could tell where it was. And I thought it was ridiculous. So I built this one. Um, this truck's name's Tumbleweed. So that got okay. in there. And this winch was in it and it actually works. Now, I think I've used it once. And as you can see, like, yeah, it's not <laughs> wired up right now. After trying to get unstuck for like 30 minutes, yeah, you you're get like, all right, okay, yeah, I'll get out and yeah. actually put the effort but, in to get it together. Like I figured it came on the truck, it was part of history. I'll put yeah, it back yeah. in the truck. And it looks well, cool. Like those, those bumpers, when it all looks super tacky, there's a lot of people that don't have the imagination to say like, I can make that look a lot better yeah. with a little bit. Yeah. And it deters a lot of people from buying it, right? You get it cheaper and um, yeah. it's, it's not sold the second you get there, right? So. <laughs> yeah, the normal horn is really lame. The air horn will wake him up. Yeah. It's just a, a, a scooch type for me. So yeah. The pedals and need to go a little farther back, yeah. and the steering wheel needs to even like, for me. Like, like an inch and a half and then tilt up a bit. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not a comfortable drive. Yeah. In 73, the next body style, they added, I want to say, three or six inches to the back of the cab oh, okay. to get more space up there. Interesting. Um, so get a 73. Yeah, 70, 70, 73. Yeah, uh, that's uh, mind you, the dashes in them. I hate. They look. They're tacky. It's like the plastic from the 70s. Yeah, like they were getting yeah. crazy. Like this is way cooler. Yeah, yeah, I love it. That seat was in this truck when I got it. Oh, it's okay. mid 90s, yeah. whatever. Yeah. The interior was gutted. There was no carpet on the floor or anything. It just had these like green squares of, so this is all from LMC, all the floor liner and whatever, okay, okay. new trim. He put door seals on it. So it doesn't, um, it didn't whistle. Now the window, the vent windows. The vent windows are yeah. a pain, yeah. Like the GTO does it, but that's cause this latch gets yeah. a little bit of play in there and it just, you can't tighten it. Yeah. It like jam a piece of coffee Cardboard, cup in there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the old Timmy's cup. Yeah. Yeah. But beyond that, I haven't done a whole lot. Like I tied it up. The headliner, I put canned flag up there nice. before that was like a political interest. <laughs> oh yeah, you did, you did it before it was cool? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny how you can hijack something like that. Yeah. Right? yeah. But I thought it was cool. I mean, I was oh, 19 yeah, yeah. years old. Oh, absolutely. Nobody looks up anyway. Like, you yeah. wouldn't believe the number of people. That, like years they've been riding around and be like, when did that get there? <laughs> <laughs> the day I built it. <laughs> so the two switches and the gauge, they come together in this rinky-dink plastic thing. And I didn't like that. So I had this built and I'd left room for everything in it. Yep. So yeah, it went in there. That gauge, that's for air in the tank. Yep. It's not actually hooked up, cutting in the right fitting for it. Okay. But yeah. And then <laughs> air horn. Whoa, dear Lord. Normal horn. And that's that switch is wired under the hood. It is for the air compressor clutch. Um, so you can turn it on or off and then like when you turn it on, it'll run off for your governor on for your Bluetooth air compressor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's got the drive shaft. <laughs> you have to switch to turn the compressor on, but not that far. But yeah, yeah, then we stopped. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to pull the dash apart again. Give me a break. It's like eight eight screws. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of wires back there. Yeah, I took it down to the farm and the neighbor's kid's like, do a burn it, do a burn it. <laughs> Okay, yeah, no yeah. problem. So, so I like, like revved idea. it up, first yeah. gear, dumped the clutch, <laughs> bang! Blow the drive shaft clean <laughs> off. It hasn't been on the road for five minutes yet. And I didn't even have a front drive shaft to limp home again. I had to get the tractor and tow it home. <laughs> so this drive shaft is out of a Super Duty, but it's a, I wanna say 1410 or 1450U joint. Okay. Um, they don't make a conversion joint to go from my axle, which I should have got a new um, yoke. Yeah. yeah, I didn't do that. Yeah, expensive. So what I did is I got the biggest conversion joint I could, and then I had a friend of mine who's a machinist make spacers. <laughs> so they're on the outside, and it was supposed to be temporary, but it works so damn well. Oh, well, it's still in there. I'll get you to do a burnout in Timmy's parking lot. No, no, I don't own this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long way home. Again. Now you did see the shape of these tires, right? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing too crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but respect for our old vehicles. That pop full turn? Yeah, it'll go full turn. Yeah. Ah, Before, so this truck, when I bought it, it had a um, Mustang steering wheel in it, which is like 14 inches. Yeah. Manual steering um, in these 35 inch tires. I tell you, when I got this thing on the road, like two weeks in, I'm like, why am I so sore all the time? My arms are so tired. 
the end of that year, I was like freaking Superman. I was jacked just from cranking this stupid thing around corners. It, parking was the worst. It's kind of a pain to neck, but it's just it's part of the character, right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. I think that poppin' is the um, leaf springs moving the crown, the shackles. I'm not uh, sure. Yeah. Also, the steering geometry, the front tie rod, um, the what's that, dragon? The yeah, dragon yeah, yeah. It connects to it, and it's got a slight bend. So when you turn the wheel, it does this and oh. takes up a little bit of slack. Okay. And I don't know if it's popping around or what. The plan was. I was going to get high steer, like yeah, the caps yeah, for it, yeah. and do a tie rod across top, and then mount my drag link right to the bottom bracket, yeah. and that was hopefully going to get rid of all the issues. But well, now Mark can deal with it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How do you take it? I don't drink it. Oh, yeah? Uh, like, <laughs> anything? You want something to I, eat? I would drink a hot chocolate. Yeah. Hi, yeah. right, can you get two medium regulars and a medium hot chocolate? That's it. Thank you. Okay, so I passed the, um, the drive through test. I didn't have to shut it off. Yeah. So I have to come back with the power stroke. Oh, yeah. To, to That's the one that I shut it off like for them, yeah. Yeah. You too, thanks. Or did? Yeah. <laughs> Constant battle. If you're really good, you can set them up in the corner. <laughs> when this had manual power or manual steering, no power steering. In it, I was drinking a can of pop and like trying to turn and shift gears, and then I'm like covered in friggin' like orange soda or whatever the heck it was. You used to have to prep a uh, traffic light. Like you'd get it in first gear and you would grab the wheel like this, and give it a yank, and try and get it into second real quick. Yep. My first truck was a little less than, yeah, and it was manual steering with the tiny steering wheel. It was the only way I could fit in, but it was so light that it didn't really matter. Yeah, yeah. I probably didn't have 35 tires. <laughs> <laughs> So how many, how many miles do you think you put on it? So it's like a five digit odometer and I haven't paid that much attention, but I don't know, 40,000, 50,000. That's awesome. These are the same tires I got on it. Um, and when, when you bought it? Yeah. Okay. I drove it home on these tires. Yep. And they're getting pretty tired there now. You said it had stacks? Yeah. So the original box on this truck. Yeah. That guy that owned it then yeah. had stacks on it. Ah, uh, with and big giant holes in it. Awesome. Yeah, well, just one. He put one hole here, <laughs> cut straight through, the, actually the other side, I guess it was, cut straight through that front cross member of the box. <laughs> so like the box sides are flapping. <laughs> and then he, it's a piece of square tube welded between these. He's like, oh yeah, it's a resonator. It really barks. And you like get in, it's like, <laughs> like oh yeah, that's not a bark. Like <laughs> that is full on. That's a dragon <laughs> screaming in yeah. the rear, yeah. I built a new bumper for it as well. The rear, when I got it, I don't know if it had like a drop tailgate, but the bumper, it has this cool cutout around the side here and then dove in. So there's no bumper at the back. Okay. It's just like a piece of flat bar. Okay. So I built the new custom bumper. It had lights in it, big mud flaps. And they come around the side like this, so you could climb on the side and get in. Oh, okay. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> I kept that one too. <laughs> Before or after the Kijiji deal? Before. Okay. So okay. It had a blue tailgate on it and I was kind of fond of the back of my truck. So I kept the tailgate and I gave him this one, which actually fits, it fits better. It fits the patina, right? <laughs> I'm like the only bright, guy to write blue. Actually, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> this, this I was fond of my tailgate, so I kept it. So, and you get that dented up piece of crap well, with a different color. The other one was dented up as well. Give me a break. I imagine so, this, but at least it was brown. <laughs> no, it was, it was blue, it wasn't brown. Oh, okay. <laughs> This one was actually in a barnyard in Saskatchewan. The last time I went out there, I'm like, I need tailgate. I want to keep my blue tailgate. <laughs> Buddy, it was in a rusty old truck. He's been driving his tractor over it for like five years. He's like, you can have that. Okay. <laughs> Drilled some holes in the back of it, popped it out, made it straight. It opens. It did. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> Guy was driving over it, using it as a ramp. Yeah. Pretty much. Soft spot. Yeah, I've actually sold, um, like I had another box. It was like an old firewood trailer and it was garbage. And so I bought it off the guy and I just cut at this seam here. Um, and that's, I painted this color. And that's what my blue tailgate stuff. So oh, now it hangs on the wall at home. It's like tumbleweeds always, oh, always nice. around. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, awesome. Yeah, awesome. the wife loves it. It's, <laughs> it's funny how you get attached to it, eh? Yeah. And even well, though it's the right decision to sell it, it's like, yeah. 
don't want to. Yeah, so at my wedding, my buddy came up with this analogy. It's like trucks are like people. And so this truck, this should be like that high school girlfriend you had. Yeah. Like it's the coolest thing ever. And like you want to stay with them forever and you're going in the direction you want. And then you're like, well, maybe you're not quite as cool as I thought. <laughs> like, oh, dude, I'll go over here. Doesn't mean you didn't make those memories, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah they were yeah. good memories. Well, and now I can come and visit whenever I want. So yeah, just don't tell your new truck you're still visiting your old truck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The, the new one's also brown. So I'm like, hey, Mark, like when it gets red, I'm like, we should set them up side by side, like take some pictures, you know? Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's sweet. Yeah, yeah, but it's girlfriend and wife meet. Yeah. yeah. I was always really happy with the interior in this truck, but it's clean, it's nice, it's comfortable. Yeah. It's all the original firewall, floor pan, everything. The only thing I had to make this like doghouse type of thing over the transmission, that's the shift tower yeah. and it poked up into the floor. Okay. <laughs> and so I had the motor and transmission in the truck and I set the cab back down on, cut my hole. Yeah. And then I had to put a new clutch in the thing. You can't get the transmission out of this thing with the cab on it. Oh yeah. <laughs> I had to jack the cab up to get the transmission out of the thing. And I got, didn't really plan that one out too good. But it's got a new clutch now so Mark won't have to deal with that. Yeah, wow. nice, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it had a dual mass flywheel in it. Yeah. And it was coming apart and making noise and rattling and whatever. Yeah. So I got a, it's a luck, um, like solid flywheel and you can watch it, whatever. Nice. I bent one of the, um, one of the fingers on the pressure plate when I put the last motor in it. And so every time if you were, I'm trying to think, if you were just slightly on the clutch, it would like squeal because one of the fingers was touching the throw out there. Yeah, yeah. It used to drive nuts. And I assumed it was that, but I wasn't sure. And when this motor went in, I had a look. Yeah, just the one got a bend more than the rest of them. Yeah, uh, that. Kevin, thank you very much for taking the time to yeah, show no us this. Yeah. You're coming back with 77? Yeah, whenever she's done. <laughs> <laughs> nice. If you guys have a ride, as always, submit it to our uh, website. Then uh, that allows us to know where you are. Uh, if you're within driving distance of our shop, you're welcome to come down and you get, kind of get a tour of the shop and get to hang out for a little bit and we get to check out your ride. But if we're on the road, no matter where you are, we might someday be in your area. So a lot of traveling through Canada and the States. So then we know where you are. You might get a call from us and say, hey, uh, can we swing by and check out your build? A small engine swap or an all out frame off build, a restoration, we love them all. And we appreciate the work and the time and effort that goes into it. So um, thanks for watching guys. Lots more coming up. Remember if you're not filthy, you're not rich.